Hello everyone, welcome to 27. So you're thinking about buying a Lotus Aurora. And what can I say to that? Well done, great decision. These are some of the most underrated cars out there, I think, for the last sort of 10, 20 years. They're absolutely brilliant. They're really, really good. Now, Lotus came up with this as an alternative, believe it or not, to the Porsche 911. They were sort of expecting to sell about 2,000 units a year. In actual fact, it's averaged out more like sort of 400 units a year. And the reason for that is that originally they were overpriced. It didn't help that the launch editions in 2009 were completely loaded. So you're looking at about, I think, £59,000 for, for a Lotus, for an Avora. Unsurprisingly, most people went for the 911. But that's a big mistake. So in 2009, this came out as the standard Avora with a 3.5 litre V6 Toyota engine. A year later, Lotus introduced the S, which is the supercharger version of the Avora. So that changed power from 280 horsepower to 350. It reduced the 0 to 60 time from 5.1 to 4.6 seconds, and top speed went from 168 to 175 miles an hour, I believe, something along those lines. I'm not sure on those top speed figures, I have to say, but they're, they're pretty meaningless anyway. Model variations are that in 2012, a new gear change mechanism was introduced. It's just the, the wire that goes to the gearbox, which was improved. These had an interior makeover, so they had slightly nicer materials on the interior. They look a bit nicer and are definitely prized over the earlier cars. And then finally, the 400 came out, I think around two or three years ago, and that was thoroughly updated, both the interior and the exterior. I'll talk about each one of these things in turn. The early non-supercharged cars, they start from what I've seen from the sort of mid to high 20s and go from there. The S's, like this car, start from around 32. There isn't actually a huge difference. This is 32,000 pounds I'm talking about, UK money. I'm not sure what prices are like in the US or in the rest of the world, but I think they're sort of similar. So the price difference between an S and a non S is really only sort of two or three thousand pounds. In that case, I would definitely recommend that you go for the S. Just much more worthwhile, really. In terms of fuel consumption, in terms of everything, there isn't that much difference in terms of running costs. But in terms of the way they, they handle and the power, this is in a different league. The non S cars, so the non supercharged cars also had softer suspension. So they really do feel different to these. I mean, they're fabulous on a country road, but these are supple, amazing cars on a country road as well. And I think this is really the right balance for what you're looking for. So the S I think would be my pick of the earlier cars. Now with regards to the improved gear gearbox mechanism of the 2012 cars, I, I've driven a few of these now. And to be quite honest with you, I think that Either the gearbox works well. Now, this car is a 2011. It may have had an upgraded gear linkage. I'm not sure it was just set up properly, but it actually works very, very well. Cars which are bad, they tend to have a very sloppy, loose mechanism. It's really evident. If, you, if the car that you're going to test drive doesn't have that, I think it's OK. I don't think it's worth sort of going to the bother of trying to hold out for a 2012 car. Just drive the one that you're interested in that has the right spec. And if the gearbox feels good, then go for that car. Don't hold out for a 2012. If you go up to the 400, well, you're looking at a starting price of about 60K. I mean, that's, that's another 25 grand on top of the equivalent S. I personally don't think it's worth it. JM, who's done a lot of Lotus stuff, he's got a 400. Um, JM on cars, look him up on YouTube, he's a good guy. We did a test comparing these two cars. And whilst I loved his yellow car, the only thing that I really, really miss about it and that I would have over this is the noise. As standard, these are just way too quiet. The earlier cars up to 2012 also had a third cat. I've removed it on this car and it now sounds better, but it's still not dramatic enough. It's still not quite loud enough. But for me, that was really the main area. The interior has been improved ergonomically because this is actually a disaster ergonomically. You can't see any of the switches while you're driving. But these aluminium switches actually look nice. Ergonomically, the 400 has a better interior and it looks more like a modern car on the interior, but 
it's actually more plasticky. The switches are more plasticky, not quite as solid. So you gain some, you lose some. The 400s had an aesthetic makeover as well. They're much more angular at the front and at the back. And personally, all in all in balance, I think I prefer the way the older cars look, but some people like the newer cars. So it's really up to you and what you're looking for. I don't think that the price difference between the two is quite justified. If it was more like sort of five, 10 grand, then yes. But I think, a, you know, it's almost a 40%, 35% increase. For me, personally, it's not worth it, but it might be for you. When you're buying an Avora, in terms of options, you want to look at the three packs that were offered with them. There was the Sport Pack, the Tech Pack, and the Premium Pack. This particular car has all three, and all S models, so all the uh, supercharged models, actually came with the Sport Pack as standard. The Sport Pack included bigger cross-drilled um, discs, and also a Sport button inside the cabin that sharpens up the throttle response, raises the volume of the exhaust, very important there, and also gives you a bit more room to play with the traction control system as well. The premium pack offered sat-nav, Bluetooth, reversing sensors, cruise, which is really, really vital because you cannot see very well out of these cars. One of the ways in which a 911 is much more practical is actually getting in and out. It's not terrible on the Avora, but getting in and out and seeing out the back of the car, the 911 completely trumps it, as it does, I have to say, on quality. These aren't bad, they are good, but a 911 is better built. But let's get back to these packs and the various options that you want. So the Sport Pack, you'll get a standard on the S. If not, make sure you get it on the normal car. The, the Tech Pack, essential, I would say, reversing camera, sat-nav unit, double din, all that kind of stuff. And the Premium Pack means you get full leather trim, a reversing camera. Actually, I think you get that in the Tech Pack as well. Reversing camera, improved stereo, which is awful anyway and Xenon lights as well. Now, when it comes to the 2 plus 2 or the 2 plus 0, the 2 plus 2 has two little rear seats and the 2 plus 0 has a rear bench. Personally, I don't have family at the moment, so I really wasn't bothered, but there's so little room in the back that it's a really a 2 plus 2, maybe for babies up to two or three years old, and that's pretty much it. There's no room in there, less than in a 911, so it's really not worth it but you are getting yourself really like a junior supercar. There's nothing that compares to an Avora for the sense of occasion, how it drives. For me, more special than a 911. Controversial, I know. Let me now take you through some of the issues that you should look out for on these cars when you're gonna buy one. Okay, so firstly, the lights, they tend to lose their their covering you can see this one here is peeling it's not a huge big deal you can just take them to a paint shop and just get them to give them a coat of lacquer and it will restore it back i think it's a protective film maybe to stop sunlight damage or something along those lines but it is coming off uh, and that's a shame really i wouldn't have expected that in a car that was about sort of five years old so that's one of the things to look out for Water leaks are a big thing on these, so make sure that the, both the passenger and driver footwell pads are completely dry because that's what tends to soak up all the water that comes in through various sources, including windows and through the front heater box and the front screen. So go in, make sure you lift them up well and just check them thoroughly and make sure that they haven't absorbed a load of moisture do that on each on both sides something else which may seem trivial but actually isn't is the airbag cover on the passenger side it tends to warp and lift with sun so you need to check them it should be completely flush with the dash as this one is normally what happens is that they pop up on this edge here the, the leather sort of pulls and and gets tight pulls it up here and breaks the plastic tabs. It's a dash out job. You have to then replace the plastic tabs, which don't cost very much, and then keep an eye on it. If you own an Avora and you don't keep it in a garage, make sure you always use a sunscreen if you're leaving it out in the sun. Otherwise, that leather will sort of pull back and it, it will probably cause it to pop up. So have a look about that because it's not a cheap fix. 
The body is, is composite and the chassis is made out of aluminium, so you really don't need to worry about rust, which is fantastic. Just make sure that all the panel gaps are even and that it all looks straight, pretty much as you would do with any other car. The gear change on this car has a different gear knob. The standard one is absolutely awful and horrible. This is one from an Elise which you can buy for about £70 from Lotus. It's a little bit more weighed and it just feels better in the hand. It just improves the way the gear change feels. It should be quite precise and easy to slot through. If there's loads of play and a lot more than this, then something's not right and the gear change needs adjusting. Now that is not quite as cheap or as easy as you think it would be because lots of body of interior panels have to be taken out. The interior I think is lovely. It's got a lovely architecture. It's got all this sort of aluminium switch gear which feels actually quite good and quite solid to the touch. Um, so that is, it's nice. The later cars and they have Alcantara here, Alcantara covered handles there. So it, it's just, you know, it, it looks a bit nicer. The 2014s have a completely different layout. Sorry, not the 2014s, the 400s have a completely different layout. And I'd suggest that you have a look at it and see if you prefer it or not, because I think it's going to be an individual thing. Where the 400 scores over this and where more, most cars do score over this is in the ergonomics. You cannot see any of these buttons when you're driving because they're in the way of the wheel. They're not that easy to, to sort of to operate or to find out. But on the whole, for me, the interior has a thumbs up. Engine, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's too quiet as standard, particularly on some of the earlier cars up to, I think, 2012. They had three cats and that's because Lotus was worried about emissions to the American market. They weren't ever needed, not even in the American market. So it'd be good when I got this car, it still had the third cat. I've taken that out and I've put a K&N filter in there for a bit more intake noise. Not that sure how much of a difference the K&N made. Taking the third cat out certainly made a difference, but it's still not quite loud enough for me. The 400s do sound better. Your solution is to go to a place like Tubular. They will do you a completely new back box, which will be a lot nicer and depending which option you go for you can still have it linked so it's switchable with a sports button um, which is obviously a useful feature because you don't want it blaring out if you're just sort of sitting on the motorway at 70 miles an hour okay you can't actually see that much from here the main thing that you see is the supercharger that is a really really reliable unit not many problems reported with that so you don't need to worry too much the engine it's a 3.5 litre v6 from toyota again super reliable i haven't heard of many problems if you do change to a k and n filter make sure it's not over oiled because i have heard of those causing problems with the sensors and causing issues there as sort of oil and stuff is is dragged through being a 3.5 litre v6 from toyota also means it's really cheap to service which is brilliant much cheaper than a relative you know the 911 or anything like that you just need to watch out for the lotus idiosyncrasies um, this is part of the premium pack, it's even leather trimmed here, so it's actually better than you would expect from a Lotus. So I've taken you through some of the main things that I've learned when I bought my Evora. Please do look at other buyer's guides, I'm sure I haven't covered all the issues, but in the end, which model you buy is really up to you. As I mentioned before, the 400 has a bit more power, it looks different, it's certainly improved in some ways, particularly in, the, in terms of noise, and actually the gear change is supposed to be a bit better, though I didn't notice a massive difference with this car. The earlier cars, going from 2009 to 2016, I think, um, there's one major change, 2014, where they had a bit of an update, improved gear change mechanism, but again, I suggest that you drive each individual car and make your mind up when you drive the car if you're happy with the way it is or not rather than looking at a particular model year. If you're thinking of buying an Evora, please do. If you're interested in seeing more, there's some videos that I did on this particular car. This is part of my 12 car series. This was car number 10, I think. So there's another two or three videos on my channel that shows when I went to collect it. There's a proper road test that tells you how it drives and how it handles. So please do have a look at that. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you buy and really enjoy your Evora. I know I have. Hello everyone. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome. Hello everyone and welcome. Oh, fuck. So I've taken you through I've taken you through some of them. So you're thinking about buying a Lotus Evora. 
Hello everyone, welcome to 27. So if you're thinking of buying a pack and the 